on the left is the scan file and on the right is the result of 21 and 22 laminate design. Let's take a look at what you need to consider when outputting your designed laminate. If the layer thickness is 100 micrometer, the layers are clearly distinguishable, which is insufficient for use as a final process. At 30 micrometer, the layers are barely visible. Printing at 50 micrometer results in a smooth and shiny surface finish. Reducing the layer thickness increases the quality of the output, but it takes a lot of time. Imagine that the fat is filled with resin. The layer thickness is represented by a scale. When the build plate comes down, there is resistance in the resin, so it takes time to fully position itself. This time depends on the viscosity of the resin. If you don't wait long enough and photopolymerization starts, it will start to cure. This will cause it to glow in size to the side. It can also cause bubbles to form in the resin which can cause strength issues. I haven't found an exact name for this phenomenon. We will just call it the jelly effect and move on. 0.5 to 1 second is generally enough for the resin to start moving. However, it takes longer for viscous resin to get still, so then you will need longer rest time after it wreck. While low viscous resin will need a shorter rest time. If you don't have enough light of delay time, your print may have an even surface called blooming. Considering all these cases, it is very difficult to have the perfect output for different situations. However, this problem can be perfectly solved by using sensors that check whether the four corners of the plate have come down enough. A printer with this feature allows for free size output, making it ideal for use as a final dental prosthesis. You should consider the following when choosing a printer and material. These are the printers I have been using recently. I printed laminates with 15 micrometer layer thickness on each printer to verify the output result. Different printers may produce different output results. Design a laminate on an intraoral scan of a tooth. Print out the tooth and laminate. Combine them together and scan them to check for output errors. On the left is the scan file and on the right is the result of 21 and 22 laminate design. Run Medit Design app. In Medit Design, select and import the original file and the print result file. Use the split view option located on the side toolbar to work with two sets of data simultaneously. This option is available during overview and deviation display modes. Select the deviation display mode. In split view mode, we'll do the data assigned twice. In reference, put the combined scan file and laminate CAD. Put the output from each printer into target one at a time. You can see the error range in color. Since the maximum error is between 0.3 to 0.4 mm, we make the error range 0.4. We change it to 0.05 to represent the clinical tolerance in green. If you think the color bar, its value will change on both sides if you change it for one of the data set. To check the exact measurement, click on the specific position on the data. Run measurement mode. Make a cross cut of the area. Right click to bring up a pop up menu and select show this only, which will leave a cross section 
and make others invisible. In cross section, tooth number 11, where there is no laminate, the model printing error value is 48 micrometer. In cross section tooth number 21, a relatively thin laminate, we see a error of 70 micrometer on the wise printer and 351 micrometer on the left printer. In section tooth number 22, a relatively thick laminate, errors of 55 micrometer and 173 micrometer are found respectively.